Doing these videos has given me some motivation to finish my projects that I've had sitting around for a long time. So I decided to start a new, uh, like a lot of people do, Whip Wednesdays. And I'm going to start on a project that I started, I think seven years ago. And I've worked on it off and on. And my problem, like I've said before, is once I figure out how to do something, I tend to not work on that project anymore and I jump to a new project. And this is one of those cases where I wanted to learn how to do some things. I figured them out and I stopped working on the project. I would jump back to the project now and again and uh, never finish it because I'd always jump to a new project. Well, this will give me a reason to finish this project and work on it. So this project's gonna be uh, the row house. Uh, I've had it for a long time. I wanted a project to where I could put buildings on the edge of a board that would add to the theme of the board, but not really take, any, take away any space of the board. That's why I came up with this project was to, uh, for that very reason, so. since working on these row houses last time I've changed a little bit of how I do rocks and I don't want my rocks gray anymore I want it more like this uh, I did this uh, last year sometime I think and I like how the rocks turned out much better I was kind of playing around with different shades from GW and I like how it turned out so I want to kind of lean towards this direction so that means I need to repaint all my gray rocks to a more tan color but as you can see this is what I kind of want to lean towards and go in that direction instead of in the direction I was going. Uh, how things change, but it's a little bit of work, but that's what I want to do, and I think it'll be better in the long run. So let's get started. Just using a tan, just a uh, toll painting tan, just a normal tan that's uh, not going to cost me a ton of money. And let's get started and paint some more. paint's now dry. I'm gonna go ahead and give these things a shade. So one thing I forgot to mention, I did make a tutorial on how to uh, carve these rocks out of the plaster and I'll put a, a card up above so you can go check that out. 
Anyway, now we're gonna let this dry and we'll come back later and start dry brushing. All right, All right we're gonna dry brush now and we're gonna, I'm uh, gonna use sandstone to lighten things up. And I'm gonna use a Citadel dry brush. One of the things too is when I, when I do it, I'm gonna go from the top down because of how the light hits it. Because right now I'm just trying to expose the little nooks and crannies within inside the rocks and just give the rocks a little bit more texture. Dry brushing is complete. Uh, I'm gonna go on to start doing the shades. All right, so I loaded my palette with Druchi Violet. I'm gonna mispronounce all these things. Nona Oil, uh, Biltan Green, Agrax Earth Shade, Reichland Flesh Shade, is it Flesh Shade? Yeah, and Sepia. So those are the all the shades that I put in here and all the ones I'll be working with on this on these rocks. Primarily focusing on the bottom right now. And I'm just kind of going random.
gonna come back and just kind of do some spot touches on these, just kind of darken some of the bottom parts of it up just to kind of even it out now that some of it's dried a little bit more. Just kind of give it a little bit more color too. More purples and greens, but do whatever you want. Um, I kind of just like to tend to, tend to mix things up. This is a little bit extra effort to work on and do some buildings, but I figure if I'm going to do them once and I'm going to be on the side of my board, then <clears throat> why not put a little bit extra effort into it? And plus, I, when I do this, I learn more for future projects, just kind of see what I like and what I don't like and how much exaggeration I, I, I'll do compared to other projects I've done in the past. You always want to darken the bottom where it's uh, meeting the earth because of you have your fungus, you have your different types of uh, plants and things that can grow up the wall. Uh, you also have dirt, rainwater that splashes up and can cause, uh, cause it to stain more as well. If you go around and look at houses that their stucco is next to the mud or the dirt, you can kind of, kind of see that bottom layer of of their house <clears throat> is dirty more so than the rest because of all the rainwater and uh, the mud that gets splashed up on it. Now as usual if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave one and we'll get back to you and do our best to answer your questions. If you have any suggestions or uh, any tutorials like to see uh, leave those as well. with a sandstone and a soft gray and do some dry brushing but very very light dry brushing uh, just to kind of bring out the top edges again we're gonna do the sandstone first I'm using a different brush it has a kind of softer bristles like I said ever so lightly and I'm really trying just to hit the top of the rocks on this one Now, if you notice, there's kind of a ridge right here. I'm just kind of trying to hit that ridge just to bring it out more. And if, if you want, you can also go back in and use a finer tip brush to even bring out uh, some of these edges even more and make them pop. Now on a smoother surface like this, I really want to have very little paint on my dry brush. And I really want to bring out the parts of the skull and make, a, and make them pop so it's very recognizable from arm's length when you're playing a, a game. I know people have mentioned in the past that they get kind of sick of the skull thing, but I like it in certain situations. And looking down from above, it's hard to really tell that that's a skull in the first place. So now on a big surface like this, I try to, I come back and I, I hit that area 
<clears throat> man, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. Hit that area after I know a lot of my paint is off my dry brush. And I'll just keep going back and, like I said, I'm just trying to hit the tops as best I can. And Now this one I kind of want to exaggerate a little bit more just because it's protruding. And I'll come back and hit the top of it a little bit more. When I first start dry brushing in, this, in a section like this, and I know I might have a little bit extra paint on here, I really just want to hit the edges before I start going into the more of the recessed areas. Just in case I have too much paint on there and I don't really want to get down in some of the areas that I want to still kind of leave dark. Now remember, in some of these places like up here, it's not as critical because I'm going to go back and add flock and uh, static grass later. So it's not as critical. Now I don't want to really do a lot of dry brushing right here because that's kind of going back down underneath the rock. So I don't want to have a lot of dry brush there. So I want that to still kind of feel like it's more in the shadows. So I'm going to hit more dry brush up top where the sun's going to hit it or light will tend to hit it more before it goes down into the recesses just to help exaggerate the effect. All right, now we're going to switch to the light gray. And this one, you even want to be more sparingly. You want to make sure there's very, very little light gray on your brush because it'll go a long ways. And I don't really want a lot on there. Obviously, I want this right here to be a little, I want that to really stand out and pop because I want it to be very noticeable as far as what the structure of the of this is. And I, want, I want the, I think the nose is cool, so I want that to show up as well. I want to go back on my sandstone, just kind of touch up a couple areas and I just want to kind of have it exaggerate a little bit more. Anyway, you, as you can tell, you can go back and really make things pop even more. And that's entirely up to you, too, uh, to how much you want to actually make things pop and show up. There's all kinds of, you have all kinds of options. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> if you want to support us, you can support us at paypal.me slash platypusscotsman or Patreon. Um, comment below if you have any suggestions you want to see. As far as tutorials are concerned, let us know. And I hope you enjoy this and come back and have a good time. As always, links are in the description below. That was wrong <laughs> to you. <laughs>